Okay, everybody knows Coach O. He's here for 10 minutes, and he's ready for questions. Coach will start here on your right front row. Coach, I don't know if you're, you're tired about this question yet or not, but um, the, when, when you look at the quarterback battle, um, how close is it, and do you know, you know when you will name a starter? Yeah, it's very close. I mean, either one would be a great choice. And, uh, you know, look at the work that Miles Brennan did and the way he started the season and the success that he had as far as yardage. And, you know, it wasn't his fault that we lost the game. There's no question about that. And, uh, and then he got hurt. And then you look at uh, the way Max just kept on fighting and uh, just kept on competing and just waited his turn. And like so many players at LSU, and then his turn comes against Florida in the swamp, 27 point on the dog. He wins that game. We come back and uh, we beat a very good Ole Miss team. And uh, he did some tremendous things in that football game. And uh, so both of them have shown us that they can have a lot of success at LSU. So you only can play one quarterback, right? So there's an open competition. It's stick and tack. One day I can see Miles doing better. One day I see Max doing better. Uh, no one has pulled ahead of the other one. Uh, in my opinion, they're starting dead even going into camp. It's going to be a tight race. Coach, to your left, second row. How big of a hit was it to lose a guy like Dare Rosenthal? It was huge. Uh, you know, we have been working uh, diligently to develop there to a premier left tackle. Uh, he wasn't there yet, but I think he was coming. You know, and, uh, and you know, I've been bragging about having our whole offensive line coming back, which is huge because there's a lot of continuity. There was a leader for us. Uh, you know, the right guard, the uh, left guard played near him. You know, they had, they had that friendship. You know, all those guys were friends. So it was a big loss for us. He was, he, you know, I recruited him. So, but next man up, you know, Cam Wire has done some good things for us. Another guy's going to have to step up. Uh, that's just the way it is. To your right, second row. Hey, Coach Ed, uh, Garland Gill and Fox 8 New Orleans. Uh, an hour ago, you did the Hold That Tiger tweet. Uh, five and five in 2019, or sorry, 2020, most people would think that the, the program would go down in recruiting. Not only have y'all like, stayed on point with recruiting, y'all yeah. escalated it, and you're one of the top five teams in America right now. Yeah. What do you point that as to, because after you did not have success in the field last year, that yeah. your recruiting is, is red hot right now, and you're keeping yeah. Yeah. the borders around the state. You know, you bring, you bring a very good point. You know, the, uh, you know, these players saw the 2019 season. They saw Joe Burrow. They see, they see these guys. They see, George, uh, they see Justin Jefferson on TV. You know, they, see, they see Clyde edwards alaire having success. They see all the success that LSU has had. So you just can't put it on one season. And uh, these guys do believe, and I'm talking to the recruits, that, you know what, hey, we stick together, that we can have another year like that. And... Not every year is going to be like that. No, no way we want a year like we had last year. Uh, but, you know, we have 19 to 22 starters coming back. Uh, we're hungry. Uh, maybe last year we wasn't as hungry as we need to be, obviously. Uh, I think that uh, last year is a thing of the past. Uh, we're going to deal with this year one game at a time. And I do believe you're going to see the Tigers have a very good football team. Recruiting is my strength. Uh, we have a great staff in recruiting at uh, LSU. The state of Louisiana is loaded this year. Uh, we have some great relationships with all our players. Some of our committed players have become recruiters for us. So we got things going in the right direction. Coach, to your left, front row, Ed Daniels. Coach, how can, kind of following up what Garland said, how concerned were you about that, uh, that there would be a spillover? And you've done a really good job lately of keeping the best players in state. Yeah. Can you speak to as to why you think you've been able no. to do that in, in a couple of schools in particular? Yeah, you know, being from Louisiana, you just kind of know the lay of the land. And I always felt that when I was going to be the head coach of the LSU Tigers, that my connections and the people that we know in the state of Louisiana and the communication and how to sell LSU. I mean, most young men, I can't say how every one of them, grew up wanting to be a Tiger. <laughs> I mean, I did. We all watched the Tigers on TV. We all watched them run up the tunnel. So you got to recapture that. You got to find a way to recapture that and 
although there might be some bling bling here, some stuff there, in reality, staying home is good. And staying home has its value of being a tiger and coming back to Louisiana and getting your education and getting your network at LSU. So those things are all there. And then, like I said, like I told Gordon, that 2019 season, these guys, all these guys watched it, and they believe that they, they can do it again. So recruiting has never been a concern of mine. Uh, keeping our players in state has been a concern. It's always a battle. I mean, it's a constant battle every day. I tell our coaches we can never relax. It's never done. But for the most part, we've done a good job for that. Coach, to your right, third row. Coach, until recently, you guys had dominated you know, A&M and the SEC, and now they've won two or three over you guys. You're not going to give them a lot of credit, but can you speak to what Jimbo's doing in College Station and what's making them more of a viable, viable opponent? Uh, can, you, can you say that again? I didn't understand the question. Just A&M's been able to beat you guys two of the last three years, but before that, you know, I'd lost seven in a row. Can you speak to what Jimbo's been able to do in College Station so far? Yeah, he's done a good job. He really has done a good job. You know, A&M's a good school. You can track all the talent you want right there in the Houston area. The guy's a good coach. He's won a championship. He's done a good job. Coach, to your left, second row. Coach, what is having guys like Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley Jr. free you up to do with the rest of your defense? Yeah, you know, play a lot of zone. Uh, maybe double someone else, put them man to man. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, put them on their best receiver, obviously, and cover them man to man. Uh, I, but I do believe that Durante is coming from Mike Zimmer's system, has a great way of using fantastic players. And they're, you know, you got to know what you're doing. You just can't not say, I, I'm going to cover this guy here, but then they give you different formations, they move them around. And they switch them up and they say, oh, boy, what are we doing? And some, some of that may or may not happen last year. We cannot let that happen again. Uh, so I think he's uh, – Durante is going to simplify our defense. But basically let those guys play and uh, cover their best receivers. Coach, to your right, second row. Coach, are you a, a fan of the proposal to expand the playoff to 12 teams, or do you like how it is currently at yeah. four right now? Well, you know, we got in it and uh, with four, <laughs> and uh, we only had to play a couple of games. So I like that. That was fun. And, but you know what? Whether I want to or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm a fan or not. But whatever we do, you know, football changes. You got to change it. It looks like it's, it's expanding. I hope it doesn't expand too much where we got to play three or four or five more games. I think that would be too much on the kids. It would be too much on the coaches. Uh, but I think that it is going to expand. I think that there's you know, a couple of teams that probably have been left out that, that need a chance, but I hope it doesn't get too big. I thought you need to be elite to get in that, obviously. Stay on the right-hand side, Zoe. Coach, with this quarterback battle and the guys and their experience level with Max and Miles, how do you chart this battle to keep it fair? How do you evaluate <laughs> everything, yeah. especially after last yeah, year? You, you know, well, when we were going to college, uh, there was no computers. You, know, you couldn't keep everything. <laughs> it would be hard. Yeah, but now there's computers. Now we got analysts. Now we got PowerPoints. Everything gets graded. We film everything. We got analysts grading everything. That's gradable. Now we're not going to grade individual. And, but you know, any team period that's competitive, any 707, any one on one, any team pass, any blitz period, they get a grade. And that grade is put in the computer. And then we'll put all the grades together, look at it, and see who wins. Now, Final. it may come down to that. It may not. It may come down to us say, hey, this guy's the best quarterback. I know he is. He's the best quarterback. It may come down to the last day. I'll give you an example. Last year, TJ and Max, when Miles got hurt, were in a competition. It was a close competition. Wednesday afternoon, we had a third down period. TJ won the third down period. The whole team saw it. TJ won the contest. So sometimes it's obvious. I think this is going to be obvious. I, sometimes it's very close. We have to go to the computer, look at it. And sometimes it's going to be a gut feeling. Final question, Coach, to your right. Hey, uh, Ed, one more thing. Um, I think a couple of weeks back when off the bench, you were talking about going to Destin to kind of clear your head, get things right. You were going down there with Cody and Parker. What do you work on mentally, 
you know, getting time yourself. I know important is to get away from Baton Rouge and kind of get your mind right. What did you do to kind of calm yourself down, yeah. relax, and kind of, do, I guess, do some inner work? In, on your yeah. Life? You know, for the first time, I, I got away from the office. I went nine days to Destin. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's fun. I, I surprised myself. Usually when we go to Destin and we have a, a seven-day trip planned, I'm back in two days. But, you know, I, I think with, uh, with, uh, you know, with me and my boys just being there ourselves, uh, we enjoyed it. We worked out together. We just kind of just lived in there for nine days. It wasn't like we were going on a, on a wild vacation and got to go eat every night or nothing like that. We just took it on a daily basis. So I think that was fun. You know, I always like to go ride down the bayou. I always like to go see my mother. Oh, she's going <laughs> to give me coaching points for the season. I got to write them down and take them back and get ready to go. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. All right, go Tigers.